Okay, we are back. I'm Rich Folley. We're at the National Book Festival, Washington, D.C., where we are getting close to the end of Kwame's no, guest host oh, run. Already? We just want to stick around for hour three. <laughs> we'll keep going. <laughs> but after that long flight, maybe not. Uh, we are now sitting, though, with Sonia Manzano. I told you a little earlier, I was a little starstruck. Thank Any you. Any kid who grew up in the 1970s, sure. 1980s knows exactly who you are. You're Maria from Sesame Street. But your book, Becoming Maria, an absolutely beautiful memoir. Thank you. About growing up in New Thank York. You. And it's truly stunning. Thank it's such you. Such a wonderful book. Very nice of you to say. You know, I'm going to start with a question, and then I'll turn it over to Kwame, too. But um, when I read it, I felt like this was a book for adults. I read it as someone I'm fascinated with where you came from in your life, and you write in such a poetic style. Thank you. And when Kwame came, he said, you know, this is, this is sort of geared towards middle grade and, and older. I felt like in young adult, mm. I feel like it really crosses over into an adult world, well, too. I what was your I thought? Didn't, you I didn't it? make it specifically for any particular age group. I think that anybody could read it, and if you're very young, you'll pick up what's appropriate for you to pick up, and if you're older, you'll pick up something else. I think that's what I learned on Sesame Street, that that entertainment, books, everything can exist on many, many levels. If you read uh, Mark Twain, it depends when you're reading him, right. what you're going to pick up. Uh, depends on how old you are. So I think that the book works on, on a lot of different levels. And I wanted to get my sensibility of when I was a little kid, how I wanted to put things together. I have a weird capacity to remember stuff before I went to school as a preschooler. Really? Yeah. Well, I do. There's a part of the beginning of the book where you're not sure that was your sister. I mean, there's a person there, and well, like, they never told you anything when I was a yeah. kid. I, you know, it's just mean, a person who's there. It's just my, she was sort of half there. She lived in Puerto Rico for a while. She was a half sister. She shows up, and nobody says, "Get, get this. This is your half sister out here." She just appeared, yeah. you know, and. We kept, they kept kids in the dark. I, like you don't know your real your cousin's real name is Ronaldo and not Chappy, you know, until you were 15 or something like that. I was really curious, and uh, I think that informed my life on Sesame Street. I like to give kids a straight answer. Certainly, if she's your half sister or not, exactly. you, you know, just because I'm four doesn't mean I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> I think one of the great things about having a book that is layered so that children, whether they be middle grade, high school, adults, parents, librarians, teachers, all can relate and connect with it. That's a, it's a rare thing that can be done, and it's a powerful thing. And it means that when you wrote the book, you were writing it for yourself. You were writing it to try to come to terms, right. to try to share your story, right. and you right. were writing something that ultimately you wanted to be interested in reading. Right, right, And right. That's, that's, so, that's so crucial. I'm so, so kudos interested. to you. Thank you very much, thank you. Uh, Sonia, I grew up in Brooklyn, um, in Crown Heights, and I was raised there until I was 12. And to be black and Puerto Rican in Brooklyn meant that you were political. You were just naturally an activist, yes. you had to be. Yeah. We didn't, it wasn't something that we had to do, we just were. I wonder in, in, in becoming Maria on Sesame Street, did you intentionally sort of think, I have this responsibility to be a mirror, to be a window for, um, for, for Hispanic American boys and girls? I mean, was that something you thought about? I didn't think of that at first. It, it's 1969, Sesame Street for his first year, very political climate in America. I'm on the show, Matt Robinson, the first Gordon, comes up, and he, comes up to me and he says, you're not here just to be a Latina, you know. You have to make sure that the Latino content is accurate. And I went, hum, 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 hum. <laughs> me, when did I become a spokesperson for Puerto Ricans? But then I thought about it and I thought, you know what? I'm stepping up to the plate here. If, you know, these people want to have a real Latina on television, something I missed as a kid, because I grew up in the 50s when there were no people of color on television. I said, I'm going to do my best to fulfill that. That, that. You know, I became part of the team. And I, my first political act was there was a fruit cart with bananas and stuff on it. And I went up to the producers and I said, if this was a Latino neighborhood, there would be like coconuts and platanos on that fruit cart too. They went, okay, you got it. That's Small pretty, little political act. Right. <laughs> but, how, but how special to be in a work environment where 
they listened and they did it. I mean, it was sort of the nature of television on Sesame Street at that time. I really felt like you were ahead of the curve. Yeah, really. I mean, they really were a unique group of people, Dulcie Singer, John Stone, and they asked you your opinion, not to make you feel good, but to really get information from you. Well, as you, you know, sort of talk about towards the end of the book, can you share with our viewers, how did you get that audition? How did it come to this, you know, I, this, were you acting before? Well, I was, I always say the most important things in your life happen when you're not paying attention. And I was in a show called Godspell and uh, Sesame Street was uh, two years on the air and they needed the Latino because they already had the African American uh, role models in Susan and Gordon. Mm -hmm. They wanted Latinos to come on and I thought this show's not going to last much longer. I thought, and I just, not too many Latino actors at that time, and I just wandered in there, you know, and told the story that, I, that had happened to me when I was a little girl. That's when I thought I, I will use this miserable childhood to, for something. <laughs> I'm going to use this story. And I used that story about the periscope chasing me. My, my mother often uh, complains that I never write poetry for her. And, and I tell her that you were a kiss to build a dream on. Aww. I write poetry about my father. My father was the, the, the mean one. He provided the woe to her wonder. Oh. I love my dad, but yeah, we write and we, and we, we, we perform and we bring out the things that are, are the most painful for us. Yeah. And sort of in art, that allows us to sort of share that yeah. beauty with the, the beauty of it with the world. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, why I loved when I first saw West Side Story because it was the first time I saw my crummy neighborhood but in a beautiful setting. Yeah. So I thought, wait a minute, this might be what art is. You take something banal and then you exalt it and then other people can share on the same level as you. Right. I'm fascinated you, with the when you were coming up and going to all those auditions, your family was going through massive transformations and your mother and father yeah. were having all sorts yeah. of troubles. There was a time when you weren't sure whose side you were on your right. family. It became apparent as you got older yeah. that you had a problem with your father and that you needed to separate your mother from your father. But you were at the same time becoming a professional actress. How were you juggling that sort of metamorphosis that you were going through on your own with your own family sort of dissolution. I, my career took a secondary position. I think a lot of kids get wrapped up in their family troubles and they never have that moment uh, to separate. I felt that if I can get, if I can save my family, everything else is gonna be icing on the cake. Mm. You know, we were like, like, Vietnam vets, me and my siblings, it was like, if we can get out of this, right. whatever, you know, auditions, please. <laughs> you don't know? you think that sort of like leads to sort of that freedom of when you're, when something else is even more important, something comes out. It was, that, a, it was because it, it was a sense of freedom because the other kids in Godspell, they were so like, well, what if I get a bad review or what if I don't get another acting job? But since I had come from like, mm. You know, war this hey, this war zone, I'm thinking, you know, this is not a big deal, folks. This good review or this acting job right. or, you know. It's this, um, this transformation that Rich speaks of, there's also a transformation sort of taking place right now um, in your life. So the revolution of Evelyn Serrano, the novel, Pure Bell Prey Honor, and then you have this wonderful memoir um, that just came out. You announced that you are re retired from Sesame yeah. Street. Sesame Street now moves to HBO. I know. <laughs> Do you feel like this is sort of a new, a second chapter for, for, for Sonia Manzano, or is this a continuation? I mean, you're in another career, as I'm in another career, and this all happened. It was like a per the perfect storm. I had no idea that they were going to go to HBO when I left the show. Right. Haven't so the left entirely so since so Robinson on PBS. Oh, right, right. right. There, right. There, so no. When I decided <laughs> that's still right. Still there. Yep. Still there. <laughs> Just so, not the same. Right. right. Yeah. So all of these changes are really um, reflecting the society that we live in in, in, in in many ways. I think that's why Sesame Street had to move over to HBO, but still back on yeah, PBS. Yeah. You, know. you know, and you certainly, as I mentioned, did your time with PBS for so many years and so wonderful. And you know, like to me, I'm still sort of pinching myself when I'm sitting next to you, Sarah. I, when I was like, there's, there's, there she is. 
There she you. is right there. And I'm sitting next to these amazing people. <laughs> but for those, you, you see generations of people like me, at least two generations of people who grew up with you on Sesame Street. You had that effect on so many people. Yeah, and it's great. It's gratifying. People have said many wonderful things to me in the last couple of days. And yeah. it's, I love it. But now you're, to the Chronic's point, you're now, you've entered a whole other stage. And, and I don't know if you're going to keep acting or keep doing all that, but you are going to, you found another ex form of expression. I love writing. I, it's just, I can separate myself from what I'm, from my life. I could, I could do it by myself. You don't need a bunch of people to ask you to be creative like you do in theater. You right. need a, a lot of people. Sure. I love to act, but I can't bear auditioning. Right. Um, so uh, maybe I'll do a little acting if it's just me doing whatever I want to do. Right. But I think it's going to be more in the writing. Well, you do it so well. So it's, it's, I wonder, are you, are you going to sort of embark on other forms of children's literature or other forms of literature? Um, I might try an, adu an adult. An I have, adult. I have a picture book that's uh, going to be released by Simon & Schuster okay. September 25th, Miracle on 133rd Street. Oh. Also takes place in the Bronx, and I have two other picture books uh, under my belt. And also to continue to try to help kids in whatever arena is afforded to me, like a Bronx Children's Museum. I'm working hard to make that a reality. Wonderful. Well, I'm really excited to have you here. Um, we're going to have to get a snapshot before you leave because I need it forever. <laughs> okay. Uh, the book is <laughs> for work. Sonia Manzano's Becoming Maria. Thank you for all the work you did on Sesame Street, but I'm so excited for the next phase of your career. Thank you very so much. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you.